Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I had this entire video done and my computer malfunctioned on me and I had to go back and find all of these tabs that I already had pulled up for you and I, I ended up taking out a few and just keeping it to one topic so that we can stick to the point here. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to go really uh, address this stable coin, this Libra issue that this came out in the news today. The G20 watchdog warns nations to mitigate risk posed by Libra. This is a couple of days ago, this article right here. Now, the context that I went over this with you was we covered this article right here. Central banks recommended to ban stable coins. Um, and they, they named these stable coins. I see it at least one or two of those that's on um, Coinbase. But anyway, the point is, is that G, the G20 um, countries were going to get together and you, you can see where this is all going. And, and you can see where the uh, uh, stable currency, these central banks and the governments of the world see as a threat to their fiat currencies. And so that you're not going to have stable cur cur coins. They're going to get rid of them. Okay, so what are they not going to get rid of? And that's the question. Well, so so today we saw Libra come out. Libra sees the writing on the on their stable coin wall, and Libra is trying to change their game now. And so Libra, this article comes out today. It says Libra scales back global currency ambitions in concession to regulators. In other words, they've come up, they've they've come out half baked with this thing, whereas the cake is baked with XRP. These guys have come off half cocked and, and not really. Um, or, well, let me let me preface this. They've either come off ha half cocked or this whole Libra thing, something smells fishy to me. It's one of those two. It's not anything else. Um, almost like has. So you're telling me that digital assets have been being worked on for all these years. And all of a sudden in 2019, Facebook just shows up randomly and appears to be unprepared and we're going to, hey, we want to have a digital asset. That smells fishy to me, but I'm not going to really delve too much into that. I'm just saying it smells fishy. But let's look down at what they said in this article, what Libra is changing. Remember, Libra, when they first came out, they were going to tie their digital asset. It was, I believe it was to like a basket of um, currencies and I don't remember which ones. But here's where they really tell you what they're changing. While our vision has always been for the Libra network to complement fiat currencies, not compete with them, a key concern that was shared was the potential for the multi-currency Libra coin, LBR, to interfere with monetary sovereignty and monetary policy. If the network reaches significant scale and a large volume of domestic payments are made on LBR, we are therefore augmenting the Libra network by including single currency stable coins in addition to LBR. As examples, the cover letter lists Libra iterations based on the greenback, the euro, the British pound, the Singapore dollar. Every stable coin would be backed by reserve high quality assets and short term government securities such that their value is per per preserved. Um, Desparte said, and we think this type of model improves the proximity to central banks and public institutions. While a multi-currency Libra coin, LBR, will persist, it will only ever include a combination of those stable coins using a model emulating the International Monetary Fund's special drawing rights, much as the Saga stable coin uh, launched in early 2018 proposed. Well, there's several things here, or at least a couple of things. The obvious is they're trying to change their model to something more like what XRP has was from the start, like a bridge. And they're trying to, the other thing here is, what do you know? They mentioned the Internet National Monetary Fund's special drawing rights. Okay, now let me tell you why. I mean, and then I saw on Twitter, there was all kinds of, well, 
oh, is this a threat to XRP and all this? Well, I want to show you a tweet that I tweeted out in response to this. If making, now first you need to look at this. This is from Ripple. This is from Ripple Insights back, I can't remember when they wrote this. But anyway, I took this directly from Ripple Insight. We remain more committed. No, no, I took this from a tweet which took it from Ripple uh, Insights, which is Ripple's newsletter. We remain more committed than ever to the simple goal of making XRP the world's reserve currency. I always thought that was pr a pretty amazing thing to be your simple goal to make XRP the world's reserve currency, or as di or as um, Miguel Valles says, to have the liquidity of a fiat currency, or as Chris Larson says, to be um, a, supple a supplement to capital flows uh, with liquidity, something like the Swiss franc. That's Chris Larson. Okay. So what I said here is, if making XRP the world's reserve digital currency was your goal, why would you give us access, access to it? In other words, why would they let us participate in this? And the answer to that question is very simple. You would as a testing ground. And then I said, Libra is a white paper. And Brad Gerlinghouse has said this before. Libra is nothing more than an idea. It would be like my walking into a venture capitalist office and saying, hey, got this idea. It's great. It's in my head. I wrote it down on paper, but that's all I've done on it. It would be like that. Now you give me millions of dollars. In the same vein, Libra is not going to take a white paper and then all of a sudden all the banks and central banks of the world say, yeah, let's make this the, a, a bridge currency to the world. No, it doesn't work that way. So I finished this by saying Libra is a white paper. Ripple has been testing this system for years with people like you and me as grateful guinea pigs. And I am a grateful guinea pig. Trust me, I'm glad to have been here and to get a, a piece of the pie. Believe, zero doubt ever. Now let's take this a step further. So if you believe that Libra is somehow a um a real competitor to XRP on the on the world uh, stage. You have to believe that Ripple, who started founded in 2012, and then this is their entire timeline, the Interledger Protocol. All of, if you imagine all of the things we've covered for the last two plus years, you have to believe that all of that groundwork, all those things that they've done. All of the liquidity that they've added to the system and the different things that have gone on have all been for nothing. And all of a sudden, um, and, and let me let me show you this. You also have to believe that what Greg Kidd said here mean, meant nothing. This is what he said about what they did when Ripple first started. We kind of take that for granted. That's the way Airbnb got started and Uber. They weren't in, at that time, regulated industries. But generally, yeah. things in financial services we got to be regulated. So when I came to Ripple, that was a new blockchain. That was the second thing after Bitcoin. The first month we went to Treasury to explain what we were doing. So yeah. we didn't operate under the illusion that we would never be re regulated and we would never have to ask permission. So it's finding that balance between doing something that's really innovative. But if you want to go mainstream and you're successful, you're going to run up against rules and regulations, guys with guns and badges. Yeah. So, so I walk that equally line. as powerful, actually. <laughs> so I'd like to see these new innovations make it into the mainstream. I'd like everyone in the world. Anyway, I'm not going to show you any more of, so of this, but I want to make a point. So look at this. So here's Libra. It says um, this is the Libra um, white paper. It says note to read note to readers. The first Libra Association white paper was published in June of 2019. Well, here, folks. This is where my, my, and this, this is just me talking here. I'm just throwing something out there. Am I to believe that, that digital assets came on the stage in 2009 with Bitcoin? Am I to believe that the, the, one of the largest technology companies in the world, Facebook has just gotten around to, to this idea of having their own digital currency in June of 2019. Am I to believe that? Am I to believe that when, am I to believe this whole thing? Um, you know, when I see Libra and I see Bitcoin, including Bitcoin, when I see these things, knowing what I know about XRP, I see things that where I'm like, hey, look at me over here, Libra, Bitcoin. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created, the one, is over there doing its thing and continues to do its thing. I, I just find that whole thing interesting. So let's just go with what we're supposed to believe. So we're supposed to believe that Mark Zuckerberg just goes off hot, half cocked and goes yes. up and looks like a fool at Congress, right? Yes. So yes or no, would you leave behind your children's inheritance in Libra? Uh, Congresswoman. Do you believe in what you're building? Yes, I, I do. And, and if, Would you leave behind your children's inheritance in Libra? I think it's a fair question because I, I think it's, it's, you've proven that we cannot trust you with our emails, with our phone numbers. So why should we trust you with our hard-earned money? Well, Congresswoman. Reclaiming I, my time. If you can't answer yes or no, would you leave behind your children's inheritance in Libra? Congresswoman, I would because it'll be back to me. Okay. So there's Mark Zuckerberg. You know, this whole thing just seemed to kind of come off as a half cocked for a company such as Facebook. And it rem it always I always go back to um, what Brad Garlinghouse said that his phones just started ringing off the hook. He wanted to send bottles of wine to the guy that created Libra because it really did ramp up their business. But anyway, and then I, I'm reminded of this as well. What if, a, what if a private sector entity, you know, a large company with a large network of users has a, has a digital currency? So we're looking... That's already popped out, and I think we, we had pretty bipartisan <laughs> concerns on that one. So we, uh, that's why we're doing all this work. We, need, we understand it's, I would say Libra was something of a, uh, lit a bit of a fire. We, this is something we've been focused on digital currencies for you know a couple decades. What if a, what if so they they've been focused on digital currencies for a couple of decades, and this Libra thing just caught them by surprise. They they just didn't see it coming. But they've they've been working on this for a couple of decades. Uh, all of it just sounds kind of weird to me. Um, and then uh, back, remember this, this is David Schwartz. He, he happens to come out with an XRP ledger stable coin proposal. And it just happens, he announced it here, suggesting XRP collateralized um, stable coins. One of the original use cases for XRP ledger since 2012 was using the built-in decentralized exchange to exchange between stable coins and exchange stable coins for XRP. Currently, only stable coins that have a backer issuer are supported. Um, and, he, and he came out with this video where he talks about issuing stable coins on the XRP ledger. This, I don't know how many different ways to say it. Everything, Ripple has covered every single base from the very outset of this. This thing has been a plan. And by the way, I'm going to show you a quote at the end of this video from someone who used to work at Ripple that I believe will be an eye opener for you. It was for me, um, but it, it's a quote. We've all often asked the question, how did Ripple get all these talented Ivy Leaguers with a lot to lose to go and sell a digital asset that supposedly is underneath this, this cloud of potentially being called a security at any moment? Why would they do that? And the answer is they wouldn't do that. I'm going to show you a quote at the end of this video. But first, I wanted to show you just a clip of David Schwartz. I remember him coming out with this video, and I remember thinking, well, that's kind of random out of nowhere. We released a list of suggestions for XRP Ledger development, and I got a lot of questions about the stablecoin proposal. So I thought it might be helpful for me to walk through um, what I have in the design to give people a better idea of how I intended the system to work. Um, so first of all, it's a collateralized stablecoin. Uh, that means tokenized assets whose value is, are expected to remain constant in some unit. So if it's a dollar stable coin and you have 10 of it, you're expecting its value to remain stable at $10. Um, these assets have a backing asset, in this case XRP. That means that there is something that um, is supposed to guarantee its value. Now in some of those systems, you can actually redeem the stable coin for the backing asset. In some, you can't. Um, what's interesting about this proposal is that the stable coins are perfectly liquid to XRP at face value on the ledger. So in other words, if you have a dollar in a dollar stable coin designed on the system, what you have is a $1 claim on, X, on, on uh, XRP enforceable by the ledger's payment mechanics. And the reason that that's important is with some other stablecoin designs, if the stablecoin isn't popular, it won't necessarily be liquid. If it's not listed on an exchange, if it can't easily be deposited and withdrawn, it won't be that useful. 
By the design of this system, the stablecoins can be offered through the on-ledger decentralized exchange, and they spend like XRP. So you don't need to find some way to make them liquid. You can just spend them right on the ledger. Okay, I just wanted to show you a portion of that just to let you know. These guys have thought everything through, and they've, done, they've been doing this according to all of the, you know, the documentation since 2012. Now, um, I want to show you something else. Many of you may not realize that a guy named Roger Veer, who I met in Singapore, and I watched him talking to David Schwartz. Roger Veer was one of the early people at Ripple. In fact, I believe to this day, he's one of the largest whole individual holders of XRP. He's a genius. He's also the guy that created Bitcoin Cash. Well, I happened to be listening to yesterday to, some, to Bitcoin Ben's show, and he had Roger Veer on the show. I, I'm showing you this um, because I want you to see where this world is going. And don't be surprised if you start seeing, uh, it could even be central banks issuing their own digital assets on the XRP ledger, and it could even include the United States. But I, but I want to show you just how easy the, this this whole thing is going to become. Because it's not just going to be companies. It's going to be, uh, it's not just going to be countries. It's going to be companies, too. It could be banks. It could be, who knows? It could be all sorts of things. This, what you're looking at is Roger Veer. I saw him do it, and I just wanted to show you guys. You can go to mint, M-I-N-T dot Bitcoin dot com. Now, this is, th these are coins that are built on Bitcoin Cash. But Roger Veer has set this up where you can create your own token from uh, on this Bitcoin Cash platform. He's literally got a create token thing here. You type in the symbol you want. You type in the token name. You type in uh, the um, des it says decimals, the amount that you want. All right. You can even choose if you want to have fixed supply or you can. Let's see what the other options show. Um, anyway. If you want to have fixed supply, you can have uh, fixed supply or um, the coins can go there. They can be added, I guess. So but but the, I wanted to show you this just to illustrate that it's already being done. I mean, Roger Veer, from what I can tell, is almost a one man show doing this. And he's set up his system so that people can create. I could create the digital asset investor coin right here on the spot in a, whatever amount I want. And then, of course, I wouldn't do that or get into it because then you can have problems with the SEC if you start selling your own coins or whatever. But I just want to show you, this is where this world is going. The people with Ripple have thought of everything. And it's not going to, it's going to take more than just some company out of nowhere saying, oh, hey, we want to have a digital currency now. And they've laid no groundwork. And all of a sudden, we're just going to go start this and and it's going to take over the world and it's going to compete with xrp i wanted to make another point before i leave this topic this idea of, of stable coins being um uh banned what happens when that happens from what i'm seeing here you've got 7.98 billion dollars in all of these stable coins this is tether usd coin paxos binance usd true usd Here's the one from uh, Gemini down here, the Gemini dollar. Approximately in Tether alone, if you look here, in Tether alone, you have $6.3 billion. Where does that money go? That's the question to ask yourself. If they banned these, these stable coins tomorrow, where does that money go? But the, the important point, the important thing for you to really be thinking about in all this is, Who's been working with the regulators from day one? That is Ripple, okay, from day one. Where are you safe in digital assets when they're talking about banning? You're safe in the ones that have been working with regulators from day one. Now, I want to finish this video by showing you this, then I'm going to show you the uh, quote that I was telling you about. A decade of jobs destroyed in a month. I think they said today that there was an additional 5 million there are uh, from July from um, it said let's see 22 from July 9th to 20 February 2020 the U.S. economy created 22 million jobs and now they're basically saying that we've lost almost that many jobs inside of a month, folks. Inside of a month. Listen, if you're one of those people that's getting laid off, it seems bad. 
but go in the description of my video. If you have a an IR, a 401k that you have to roll over, go in the description of all of my videos. You can open up, you can roll your IR, your 401k into an iTrust Capital for, um, IRA, and you can invest in XRP and Bitcoin and digital assets. I've got a coupon code in the description of all my videos where you can get a free month off when you open that account. Check it out. These guys are changing the world. Now, I want to finish this video with this quote. This is from Bob Way, who was, who was one of the first 10 employees at Ripple. Listen closely, folks. He says, several people left fancy jobs and joined Ripple because, I paraphrase, if we capture even a minor fraction of the international payments market, do you know the value XRP will need to have to support that? Do, you, do the math. Really, really big trade number. 100 billion XRP equals wow. Those sort of conversations always bu buoyed my spirits and made me smile. But really, they also gave me anxiety and made me remember that my job was to make sure we don't all, you know what, this up. In other words, XRP, they've done it. It's the one. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that XRP is the one. Thank you for listening.